cats thinning out here at uh, Slab City. It's all good. Uh, Angela and I are still here. And I've been working on a project literally all day. Um, <laughs> I had to go into town because I couldn't find what I need. Let me show you what I'm doing. I mentioned in a couple videos that uh, my, my tail lights and signals are partially blocked once the bike gets on here. So um, <laughs> I'm fixing it today. Uh, the first part was tapping in uh, to the lights themselves right here. So I've got yellow, green, brown, and white available for me. And then I picked up a kit, which didn't work, but basically I, I built a little four pin flat adapter here so that I can plug in the lights. But I'll show you, these are the cheap $15 lights that I got. They are incandescent bulbs in there. And for whatever reason, the running lights do not work at all. And, and actually the brake lights were swapped with the turn signal. So the turn signals were brighter than the brake lights. I don't know, it's just, they're really honky. <laughs> it was a, probably a bad purchase, but uh, uh, I got on the bike and went down to um, O'Reilly's in Brawley and I got these sweet looking LED. These are three-way running lights, brake lights, and turn signals. Uh, they are flush mounted and I use self-tapping screws to put them into the edges of my steel carrier. They're not going to get in the way of the tire. I already checked that. The tire can't get there. And uh, then wiring it up, I'm just going to wire it all up and tuck all this and zip tie it back to the source to get all the wiring out of the way. That's how they're positioned. One on each side. See? Okay. So, and they're really bright. I mean, they are like five times brighter than the stock lights anyway. So. People are gonna know when I'm trying to turn or when I'm braking way better. I'm actually this is a this is a great little upgrade. Um, I got these as uh, singles for 18 bucks a piece. You might need some wire or the wiring harness to be able to uh, tap into your lights up there. So there's that and the cost of the screws and driving around trying to find parts today. But uh, I think we're good now. So. I'll get back to you. Looks like we got about an hour of sunlight left, and by that time, it'll be time to test out my wiring. <laughs> there we go. All right, well, I got the wiring all done in the back. Angela's gonna help me and turn on a few things, and we'll see what the difference looks like here. Let me go back here. There we go, everything works. How about left blinker? Yeah, right blinker? Good, four-way. Cool, okay, and then how about just brake lights? Excellent. Thank you, nice work. I realize it's practically impossible to show the difference in the amount of light coming off, but believe it. The LEDs versus the incandescent bulbs, these down here are way, way brighter than the stock ones. And they are in a place where you are gonna be able to see them very clearly no matter what's back here. So I feel 100% safe now on the road. And, uh, oh, show you the wiring. So basically, I just looped everything underneath and then use zip ties, okay? There's a bundle over there going to there. There is a release right there in case I have to take this hitch out for some reason. That's why I put in the uh, four pin flat one, which you can't see right now. But anyway, it's, you can, I mean, you can see wires in here, but they're all tucked away and hidden. So I think it looks pretty clean pretty happy with that project. Here's one more shot in the total black here. I'm looking in the viewfinder here though. It doesn't look any brighter than the incandescent light <laughs> on this viewfinder, but in real life, it's much, much brighter. Just stand back and show you maybe like that. Yeah, that changed a lot, especially in the daytime when it's sunny and I'm on the freeway trying to change lanes, people are gonna be able to see my intentions a lot better. Sleeveless t-shirt time. I need a little uh, slab city break, so I'm gonna hop on the bike and go explore. You know, go see something that you, I normally would not see. So keep the RV here all secured and we'll go for a little trip and try to find something fun. Oh yeah, 
just got off uh, Highway 111 here. I was like all excited. I'm like, whoa, I didn't know you could just go six miles from Slab City and have this awesome lake. Like I really thought that I was looking at like blue water, like a lake. This is not a lake. Don't know if it looks the same to you, but it's just dirt. But like, there's like ripples out there in the dirt that look like a pond or a lake. That's really creepy. Anyway, now that I'm off the pavement and onto dirt, I'm gonna tour down here because it looks like there's some riding trails and so we'll see what we find. I wish you guys could watch this video in uh, 4D, in smell o vision because it's stinky. It's so stinky. I'm in a national wildlife preserve here and uh, things keep bubbling up from this little pit right here. It's really strange. Actually, this little pit right here reminds me of um, the hot springs over at Slab City that everybody's just like, oh, it's so cool, you gotta go. No, it's nasty water. And every time I go there, there's everybody's naked and it's just not pleasant over there. It's not clean either. Everybody's just scaling off parts of their skin in there. And you know, it's not like a moderated hot tub where there's chlorine. No, you're just bathing everybody else's filth. The filth of Slab City, so, nah, nah. But I did find a nice body of water on the other side of the preserve here. Got this canal here, see that over there? Lots of birds. Lots of nature over there, but there's just no way across this little canal. I drove about a mile down here and there's no, like, path over, so that's too bad. I feel good and, like, reset. I feel like my nomadic insides are good because I left and explored a little bit, smelled some different stuff, so head on back to camp. I want to talk to a few people. Okay, we're uh, back here at Slab City Entrance. I'm kind of sad that this cubicle has been painted over so many times. It used to be a really neat welcome to Slab City piece of art here, but just everybody has to change it all the time. Uh, the backside is kind of cool, I guess. Nothing about Slab City though. And then this is what you see when you leave Slab City. It used to say, it used to say good luck out there, and now it says go something else. But hey, just to give you an idea of something, I'm not trying to gross you out or anything, but I mean, because there's a lot of things at Slab City that, that could gross you out. Just to give you an idea, uh, I'm gonna show you the uh, communal shower in case nobody's in it, which there's no signs that they're good, but the hot springs are on the other side of this mound right here. The hot springs as they call it. Uh, do you guys hear the running water? I'll just make sure nobody's in here. Yep, it's empty, okay. So this is what they call the uh, Slab City shower area. Okay, so so think about this for a minute. What, what, we're, what we're doing here is we're getting the runoff from the dead skin cells of the hot springs right there, okay? And then all of that nasty, dirty water is what people go down here in the ladder and use to bake, to get clean here at Slab City. Do I even have to tell you how gross that is? Maybe they just try not to think about it or something. <laughs> <laughs> so my popular demand guys, we're gonna go talk to a van dweller here in Slab City, a friend of mine. We're gonna talk to Go Granny Joe here and uh, see what she's got going on in her van over here. Hi everybody, I am Go Granny Joe as I'm known out here, or just plain old granny. G-I-R-A-N-N-I-E, and that's how you spell it. Anyway, this is my 1990 Dodge Ram 350. I came from Missouri. I found it in Missouri. I drove by it for three years. I asked the guy, and he says, oh, I think a thousand. I go, oh yeah, because it is complete. I have a refrigerator, a bathroom, bed, came with the microwave. So I sold my cow, and I went and got BB. This is what I call her. I sold all my pigs. We put new tires on it. I sold my goats. I had my atonic fainting goats, and they put the whole new engine, new brakes, everything under the front end. So that is how I got started. The reason I'm out here is I watched too many of Eric's videos. So clear back into 14 and 15, I was watching him. Finally in August of 16, I sold everything off by choice, and here I am today. I left, oops, wind's blowing, sorry. In October of 16, hurt my knee. Ended up in Texas at my girlfriend's, spent six months in rehab, 
while I was there. BB got a paint job done by me. <laughs> I have pictures I can give to Eric. Maybe he'll show you what she looked like when we first started. So, anyway, this is my life, my love. Miss Dippy, come here. You want to say hi? I travel with my dog, and uh, I've been out here now a full good six months this time. I have been blessed. This is a blessing for me to be out here in the middle of the desert, and then along comes Eric, my two-in-one nomadic who got me out here. But when for him and all his videos, I probably wouldn't be sitting here. But I am 69, and I do this by choice. So thank you for watching, and this is Granny Jo saying, see you down the road. Guys, you think you've seen it all out here at Slab City in the desert? Have you seen a pet pig out here? I'm gonna show you a pet pig. Here's the uh, sign, no trespassing. Violators will be spit roasted and fed to Kevin the pig. That's right. Let's meet Kevin. Kevin, what's going on, buddy? I think you are the only pig out here. Yeah, I think so, buddy. He knows what I have. <laughs> Can you sit? What does mama have? Can you sit? On your bum. On your bum. All the way. Good boy. <laughs> okay, tell me about Kevin. What, what kind of pig is he? Um, he's a mix. His mother was a Juliana and his father was a Eurasian Wild. He will be four at the end of March and okay. he is actually my emotional support animal. Oh, okay. So, he uh, he's quite smart. Pigs are smarter than a dog and he uh, is a spoiled brat. About how much does he weigh? He weighs 100 pounds. We just wow. weighed him a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And he is pretty much full grown. They grow until they're four or five. So, yeah, he likes cameras. <laughs> <laughs> what does he eat? Uh, does he eat vegetables and fruits? And... Yeah, he does. So, well, he just had his piece of fruit for the day. Um, okay. He gets pellets in the morning. They're specially designed for mini pigs. And then at morning and night. And then <clears throat> in the afternoon, we both have a huge salad. Oh, okay, yum. So, lots of veggies. Life Very is rough. Little fruit. Yeah, life is rough, Kevin. <laughs> He's a good boy. Right on. Well, thank you for letting me meet Ke Kevin. You can find him online. Our YouTube channel is Mr. Grunty Pants. That's M-R period Grunty, not Grumpy, Grunty Pants. Mr. Grunty Pants. Yeah. All right, guys, go check out their channel. Look who just came running over to me. My favoriteest dog in the whole world, Moo Moo. I love this girl so much. Moo Moo, I wish you could reproduce or we could have clones of you. You're too perfect. All right, you be a good girl. Running back home to mom. Uh, I do apologize for the audio on uh, Go Granny Joe's interview there. Uh, we, we were battling the really heavy winds and for some reason my lapel microphone decided to not work and not record anything. And uh, she had already left by the time I realized it. So just to save the interview, you're, you got the onboard stuff from my Canon camera. And I do apologize for that. I will try to not make that mistake again, but just so you know. On my next video, we'll be uh, coming to you from somewhere new. So have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.